Hello, church. Uh, welcome to another devotional. You know, when I uh, start my prayers, I, I've noticed this trend where I tend to start off with thanksgiving. God, thank you for the great day. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the place where I live. Thank you for the breath that's in my lungs. And um, I don't know where that habit kind of comes from. Maybe it's from this uh, tradition or from this uh, cultural idea that I have to give thanks to God before I ask him for anything that I might want. So first say your thank yous and then ask for what you want. But this discipline of thankfulness, it's actually far more prolific in Scripture than I think we oftentimes assume, oftentimes we think about. In fact, in Paul's letters, he always starts his letters with thanksgiving. You'll read through them, and in the first few verses, you'll, you'll notice these similarities. Ephesians 1.15 For this reason, when because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. Or Corinthians 1.4, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. Philippians, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making prayer with, uh, making my prayer with joy. Or Colossians, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ, uh, Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. But you see, he doesn't stop his thankfulness in the introductions. He doesn't say thank you and then move on to the subject of the letter because thankfulness is in part the subject of his letter. When we think about Paul, eh, it's not necessarily thankfulness that comes to our mind when we think of these great and epic uh, theological or uh, spiritual ideas that he was trying to discuss, we often associate faith or we associate his faith in God. But thankfulness um, and faith don't necessarily have to be an either-or situation. He doesn't have to just be talking about thankfulness and then just be talking about faith. They are a and-both situation. You see, Paul's thinking seems to indicate that the self-discipline that is cultivated when we practice thankfulness actually gives rise to faith. It gives rise to the thing that we wouldn't associate it with, and that is what is put on display in your life. That faith that finds its source in thankfulness. And if you think about discipline, you have to understand that discipline is actually something that we have to do to become someone that we're not to become someone that we are not already right now. The reason we force discipline upon ourselves is to become the types of people which do those things that we want to do and actually do them. They don't just want to do them, they actually do them. That is the purpose of discipline. The reason you go to the gym and you lift 100 pounds is not so that you'll stop at 100 pounds. I mean, maybe that is your goal, but maybe your whole goal is higher. Maybe you go to the gym because you actually want to continue to grow. So you, you go to the gym and you lift 100 pounds, not so that you can lift 100 pounds, but so that you can lift 150. And you don't lift 150 for the sake of lifting 150. You lift it so that you can re, uh, lift up 200 pounds at some point. The purpose of that discipline is to grow. And what you are currently able to do uh, right now will allow you to do something that you can't do right now at some point in the future. It allows you to grow. It allows you to become someone that you're not. And if you want to grow in faith, you need to establish the discipline of thankfulness. You need to establish the practice of thankfulness, the, the, the repeated and sometimes monotonous and sometimes forceful practice of thankfulness. Not because that is the destination itself, the, the, the reason why we practice, the reason why we strive for thankfulness is not to be thankful, but to increase our faith, much like lifting 100 pounds for the sake of, at some point, lifting 200. We practice thankfulness so that at one point it can go, uh, go and overflow into faith and into grace. And if you doubt God is working in your life, um, write down a list of things that you are thankful for. 
when you go to bed and you lay down, I want you to think of, of something that you're thankful for today, even as you're listening to uh, this message. What is the one thing that comes to your mind that you, you say, I am thankful for those things? And you do that over and over and over again. And through the practice of thankfulness, we realize that all the things that we currently have are, are actually a gift. They're, they're a gift that we don't deserve. A gift that we don't have any right to. A gift that was given to us, not because of our deserving nature, but because of the grace of God. And all of a sudden, that thankfulness, it, it, it gives us a pathway to faith. It, it is that intermediary step. It is that discipline that we develop in hope of becoming a person that we currently are not. And in thankfulness, we're able to take on a posture that Paul takes on, that despite all of the things he lacked, he had faith, he had thankfulness. And he had those things because he had the discipline, the desire to raise it up, to build it up, so that one day he might be the type of person that God wanted him to be and the one that he always imagined himself to be. May you follow the same path. God bless.